in. Well, this is my 31st Vox Talks. When we started, we thought it would be a short-lived matter, uh, but me, Alex Bell from QI, my beautiful wife, Debbie, have been making these every day for a month now. And we carry on in the earnest hope that a little chat might help anyone who's feeling a tad alone, bored, or just bewildered. Occupying the mind is not always easy. Uh, today, for example, is the anniversary in 1949 of the first badminton horse trials. I was going to talk about that, but for the life of me, I cannot discover how horses even held the rackets to play the game. Uh, the truth is, I'm a little distracted. I know we all need to stay home, that's obvious, but nevertheless, I have the strongest desire to go for a drive. Not anywhere in particular, just poodle off and see where the open road takes me. Obviously, I can't do that, but it did make me think about the motor car and the freedom which innovations in transportation brought to women. Part of my schooling was at a boarding school in Guildford in Surrey, which on the whole was more interested in the containment of girls than their education. I was there in the early 1970s, and even then I was a geek, but the library was a place of disappointment. It was small, with mostly empty shelves, although we did have an edition of the Encyclopaedia Britannica from 1903, which under the listing motor car described it as an experimental vehicle. The general rule for our existence was that no one was allowed out in the week at all. There was 45 minutes of shopping on a Saturday and church on Sunday. Other than that, our confinement provided an early rehearsal for us all for the sort of isolated lives that we are leading now. My greatest thrill was when, age 17, I was allowed to take driving lessons. I didn't really care about driving. I just wanted to get out of the house. And I feel a bit like that now. It was the bicycle which first allowed women to head off up the road without some bloke keeping an eye. At last, they could find independence and travel alone. The first such two-wheeled form of human transport was the brainchild of a prolific German inventor, Karl von Dreis. In 1817, he came up with something he called the Laufmaschine in German, Velocipede in French, or running machine, which looked like a bike without pedals. Uh, you sat on it and ran your feet along the road to make it move forward. His first outing took him from Mannheim to a coaching inn called the Schwetzinger Rieles House. He loved this. Human beings can finally get somewhere faster, and they use it to get to the pub. He covered the 4.3 miles in a dizzying time of just over an hour. Soon, everyone wanted to have a go, but unfortunately most roads were too rutted from carriage wheels, so daring Laufmaschine owners took to the pavement, which alarmed pedestrians and caused the authorities in Germany and then Great Britain, the United States, and even Calcutta, to ban their use. It would be 40 or so years before folks had another go, this time adding pedals to push the thing along. By the 1890s, there was a complete craze for bicycles in both Europe and America, and it is one of the key factors in the liberation of women. White, middle, and upper-class women emerged from their drawing rooms and discovered a freedom no one could have imagined. There were inspirational stories of extreme daring. On June the 27th, 1894, a Latvian immigrant to the United States called Annie Londonderry set off from Boston, Massachusetts to cycle around the world on her own. She was 24. She wore a long skirt and corset, carrying with her some spare clothes and a pearl-handled revolver. She was married with three kids, and until a few days before she set off, she'd never even ridden a bicycle. Her married name was Annie Kupchowski, but she was sponsored for her trip by the Londonderry Springwater Company and agreed to use their name while she travelled. The trip took 15 months and she made her money through lectures and sponsorship. Annie became an inspiration to many women who felt the same as she did when she declared, I didn't want to spend my life at home with a baby under my apron every year. During the course of her trip, Annie went from wearing a long skirt to bloomers to a man's suit. Many women cyclists began to realise that restrictive Victorian clothing was no use if you wanted to get out onto the road. Bloomers or early trousers became a shocking new garment and some women began to dare to take their corsets off. The press were appalled and warned that women exerting themselves uh, while not being held in by whalebone and ribbon would produce sickly babies. Of course, the reverse happened. The women were fitter and so were their kids. Uh, a book called Ingenious Women about inventions by the female sex has some marvellous creations from that time. Uh, there was concern that bicycling women might endanger their modesty uh, by revealing their ankle. So Margaret Corrie from Woking in Surrey invented an ankle guard which could be attached to the frame of the bike. Uh, the problem of hair becoming dishevelled while cycling 
was solved by Clara Moore, who came up with an artificial fringe of curls which could be fixed to a band and disguise anything unkempt. Driving a car was a later development. Uh, it was today in 1887 that a French toy maker and engineer called Georges Boutin won the world's first motor race. There was a newspaper called Le Velocipede after Carl von Dreis's first machine. George Boutin had invented something faster than a bicycle and they organised their test to see if it could make it from Neuilly Bridge in Paris to the Bois de Boulogne. It could, covering the 29 kilometres in an hour and 14 minutes. The only problem with recording this as a race, or even a long distance trip in a car, is that George and his co-driver were the only ones taking part and it wasn't a car, it was a steam-powered quadricycle. In fact, the very first long-distance trip in an actual car took place the following year, and a woman was in the driving seat. On the 5th of August, 1888, German car pioneer Bertha Benz, business partner and wife of automobile inventor Carl Benz, drove an actual automobile 65 miles. She did it to prove it could be done, to increase sales, and with the multi-skilling often attributed to women, to visit her mother. Her technical skills were clear. You have to imagine, if there were no cars, then there was nowhere to fill up. And anyway, the vehicle had no petrol tank, just a carburettor which could take four and a half litres. She sourced the fuel she needed from a chemist in the city of Weisloch, thus making that pharmacy the very first petrol station in the world. She successfully cleaned a blocked fuel line with her hat pin, and when an ignition wire short-circuited, she improvised an insulator from her garter. The car had wooden brakes which began to fail, so Berta found a cobbler who fitted them with leather, thus inventing the world's first brake pads. Women continued to improve the automobile when in 1903 a woman in Birmingham, Alabama called Mary Anderson invented the windscreen wiper. Of course a woman invented the windscreen wiper. Up until then, men have been quite happy saying, don't be ridiculous, dear, I can see perfectly well. Mary's original designs were for a tram but continued to be replicated in millions of vehicles. Who else? Margaret Wilcox, one of the first American women mechanical engineers. She invented the first automobile heater in 1893. Florence Lawrence, otherwise known as the Biograph Girl, born in 1886 and best remembered as the world's first movie star, but also the person who created the technology for the first indicators in vehicles. And while we're on movie stars, check out Hedy Lamarr, who starred in amazing movies, but also invented the technology behind any of us being able to connect up our smartphones and GPS while we're driving. I think I'll just go and sit in the car. Maybe put the radio on. If I get a hairdryer and an extension lead, the dog can still put her head out the window and have her ears flap in the wind. I have no idea what anyone will think as they walk past. But I will be feeling freedom. Take care. Be kind.